Hello, students. All right, ladies and gentlemen, today we begin our next topic in our notes. We're going to try and get as much done as we can because our lab activity this week is going to involve not only a lot of coloring, <laughs> we get the color this week, but it's going to take a while. In fact, it may take a couple days for us to complete our lab activity this week. So let's see if we can get through our notes pretty well. And the topic here this week is geomorphology. Now that is kind of a cool word. I think it's a cool word. Let's all say it together. Geomorphology. And if we examine that word, we can break that apart into some basic components. And, and as we look at that word, I'm just thinking, I actually took a course in college called geomorphology. I had a whole class. I took a whole year studying this one word. It's a fascinating uh, topic, in my opinion. Uh, if you like earth science, you'll be studying geomorphology. But what in the world is it? Well, let's begin. Okay, let's look at the first part of the word geo. Does anyone know what geo refers to? Think of other words like geology, geologist, geomorphology, geocaching. Hmm. Any idea what geo means? Well, geo means earth. If, uh, if there's a word that begins with geo, then you know it's got something to do with planet earth. So, so far so good. We've got the first prefix done here. We know that geo refers to earth. What about the second part? Morph. Hmm. Maybe you think of mighty morphing Power Rangers or a morph suit or metamorphosis. What does morph actually mean? Well, morph refers to the form of something. When you talk about uh, a creature's morphology, which we will study in life science when we get there next year. But morph refers to the form of something. And these morph suits, have any of you ever seen these morph suits? Uh, they're they're, they're kind of cool, like these green screen morph suits. You can morph or you can change the form of your body into just about anything. Well, the end of the word morphology, morphology, ology, as you know, is the study of something. So when we put it all together, geomorphology can simply be defined as the study of Earth's forms or the study of land forms. Land forms is a word you've probably heard before. Uh, I like to refer to them as geomorphology. It's a little bit more scientific. Uh, and it's, it's just as accurate, obviously, as land forms, because that's what geomorphology is. So let's get into it. The biggest word, most important word in geomorphology that we can study is a word called topography. In fact, this week's lab activity is going to help you not only understand, but to create a topographic map of White Township where you live. Uh, so you may recognize some of the features that we work with during our lab activity this week. But I love maps. I love maps. I actually have a map collection at home. And my favorite maps are topography maps or topographic maps. And a topographic map or a topography map 
is one that shows the shape of Earth's surface. You see, most maps are two-dimensional. Most maps show length and width, or longitude and latitude, or an x-axis and a y-axis. But a topography map, a map showing topography, it shows depth or more, well, as well as height. If you look at this topography map, once you learn how to read a topography map, you can see how this is a mountain peak. And here is a lower lying lake area. And as you go from this location to this location, you are climbing up a hill or a mountain, you might say. In fact, it's going from, I can tell you, it's going from below 8,400 feet to over 9,500 feet. So this is over a 1,000 foot climb from the lake or the pond to the peak of the mountain. And you can tell that by looking at the information on a topographic map. These lines here are called contour lines. We'll be learning about them. And the way they are shaped and spaced can help you if you're in the woods and you're a hiker, let's say, uh, or if you're a, uh, a fire person in the field and you have to respond to a, a fire on the top of this mountain. Well, which would be the best route to take to bring water from the pond to the top of the mountain. Looking at the lines of topography could help you find the fastest, safest, and the easiest route from one elevation to another elevation. So, you know, topographic maps can be not only a lot of fun, but very helpful and useful to various professions as well. But let's get back to this Topography. Topography is the shape of Earth's surface, and in this picture of the Earth, it is very much exaggerated. Maybe I'll let you touch the Earth globe in the uh, in the classroom, and you'll feel the bumps on it, which uh, refer to the mountains on the Earth. And even that classroom globe is is highly exaggerated in as far as what real life is like. Uh, to do this, to show the Earth's surface, it's determined by or based on the type of land forms that exist on the surface of the Earth. Now, I know you've learned about land forms before, and we could spend a lot of time going over a lot of the specific land forms that exist on Earth. But we're going to make it really easy. We're just going to focus today on the three main landform types. Are there others? Absolutely. Uh, you could, well, you could spend a year studying all of just the landform types. But I just want to go over the three main landform types with you here today. So let's begin with number one, the highest ones. These are mountains. And uh, whoop, I'm just going to increase my elevation a little bit. And mountains are areas of high elevation. Areas of high elevation. And I'm just being a little vain here looking at my, my shirt collar here. All right. Yeah, I feel like I look better. Do I look better, everybody? All right. Thank you. All right. So mountains are areas of high elevation. Uh, if you look at this picture here, this looks like, to me, it looks like it could be in the uh, the Canadian Rocky Mountains. I'm not exactly sure where this is. Maybe it's Glacier National Park in uh, Montana. I'm not sure. Uh, could even be in the Himalayas. But these are big mountains. These are areas of high elevation. Here in northwestern New Jersey, we also live in the mountains of New Jersey. But the mountains where we live are pipsqueaks compared to these mountains, uh, but mountains nonetheless. All right, number two, plains. 
For rain in Spain stays mainly in the plain. That's from one of my favorite musicals, My Fair Lady. Uh, the rain in Spain stays mainly in the plain. All right, enough singing here. Uh, what is a plain? A plain is a flat landform, typically of a lower elevation. We have in the United States the Great Plains. The Great Plains, the whole Midwestern part of the United States, is uh, one gigantic flat plain. It is a flat area of relatively low elevation compared to the surrounding areas. So mountains, high elevations, plains, flat, low elevations, and thirdly, plateaus. Plateaus are flat areas, but of a higher elevation. Well, and there are plateaus all around here as well. Actually, the, the Poconos in Pennsylvania are, are technically called a, a uh, Peneplain, which is a, a plateau that has been eroded away. Uh, but there are lots of plateaus in the western United States. And uh, as I said, these are three main landform types. There are many, many landform types, so please do not think that this is an exhaustive list. All right, but let's continue. And the reason I'm limiting it to only three is because I do want to continue into things that we're going to be working with here this week. In particular, maps. We're going to be playing around with maps. So I want to give you a little introduction here to how maps really function. In the most basic sense, maps are a 2D or two-dimensional or flat representation of a 3D or three-dimensional surface. So if you were to look out the window of our room here, you can see that there are hills and there are valleys. Uh, we have a varied topography right around our school. It's a beautiful location, and we have got the best view in the whole building as far as I'm concerned. But if you were to draw a map of this area, how and what would you use to draw a map? Well, you'd probably use a pen or a pencil and a flat piece of paper. Well, how would you draw the hills and the valleys on a flat piece of paper? Well, there are some guidelines that we're going to be learning about and following here that will help us along. First, let's start with the 2D part. How many of you know what this game is? That's right. It's Battleship. And it's one of the many games that you can play from the uh, the Fun Friday cart in the back of the room if you've earned a Fun Friday in science class. But if you've ever played Battleship before, you know that there is an X and a Y coordinate system. You can pinpoint the location of your en enemy's battleship by identifying an X and a Y coordinate system. You call out a number and a letter, and where that number and letter intersect identifies a single point on the board. This is like longitude and latitude, folks. This X and Y coordinate system is a coordinate system where we've got these two coordinates that pinpoint a single location. But that single location tells you nothing about depth or height. Like in the game of Battleship, I mean, if you really wanted to play Battleship in a more precise way, you'd have a third dimension so you could judge the depth of the submarine in order to sink the sub. Now that would be Ooh, we should invent a 3D battleship game. That would be kind of cool, I think. But nonetheless, let's stick with the X and the Y, the 2D here for a moment, because as we transition to from battleship to maps, we need to understand 
longitude and latitude, and we use interchangeable names here. So let's begin with the word meridian. Meridian are also known as lines of longitude. Meridian lines are lines of longitude. And on this illustration here, I have drawn for you lines of longitude or the meridian lines. The meridian or the longitude lines are the lines that go from the north to the south pole. They are the long lines from pole to pole. Lines from the north to the south pole. And just like in Battleship, where you identify either letters or numbers, in the world, on real maps, we use what's called the prime meridian. The prime meridian. Meridian is the starting point for measurements along lines of longitude. I just thought of it now. I should have included a picture of me standing on the prime meridian. Uh, years ago, I had opportunity to go to England, and in Greenwich, England is the prime meridian where all measurements begin on planet Earth. Maybe in class I'll show you a picture of this. I'll, uh, I'll link it to Google Classroom. I'll show you a picture of me standing on the actual prime meridian. But the prime meridian is zero degrees. I'm pointing to it here on the map, and it goes right through England where it begins from the North Pole to the South Pole. And this is basically the starting point as you measure from east to to west around planet Earth. Lines of meridian measure distances east and west. Now, don't worry, I'm going to come back to this in case you didn't have time, but I want you to look at this picture again. So if this is the prime meridian, the zero point on planet Earth, you can measure west of that or east of that. And we measure in terms of Degrees, not degrees, temperature degrees, but degrees as in the degrees around a circle. And we go 180 degrees to the opposite side of the planet as the prime meridian where the international date line is. So I want you to keep that picture in mind as we continue in our notes here. So meridian or Longitude lines measure distances that are east and west from the prime meridian. And the maximum measurement is 180 degrees on the opposite side of the planet as the prime meridian. And it is known as the international date line. If there are any uh, skateboarders among you, you may have heard of a 180 or BMX uh, bicycle uh, people. You may know what, it, or a dancer or a, uh, an ice skater, you may know what a 180 is. A 180 is when you turn a half of a full turn. 180 degrees is a half of a full turn, which would be 360 degrees. So to finish up the meridian or the longitude, it's actually measured as east or west longitude. So if you think of that picture again with the prime meridian being zero degrees, you can go east or west of that prime meridian line and you measure it in degrees east or west of that line. Maybe in social studies, you've heard of the Eastern Hemisphere and the Western Hemisphere. We live in the Western Hemisphere because our hemisphere is west of the prime meridian. In fact, where we are here at our school, it's a, about 
75 degrees west of the prime meridian. We're at about 75 degrees west longitude. So that's our one axis. That would be our X axis, basically, if we were playing Battleship. It would be the number on Battleship. But that's only part of the information that we need to pinpoint our actual two-dimensional location on a map, because the second part of it, the next axis, has to do with the word called parallel, also known as latitude. So our parallel or latitude are lines that are parallel to the equator. In fact, that's a good way to remember what the parallel lines are. They are parallel to the equator. And here is the equator on planet Earth. The equator is the starting point for measuring our latitude on planet Earth. And uh, the starting point, the equator, is at zero degrees. So you can go either north to the North Pole or south to the South Pole along these lines parallel to the equator called latitude. So our latitude is north or south of the equator and goes all the way up to the North Pole and all the way down to the South Pole. Now, again, if, if you were to think of the Earth as a sphere, three-dimensional sphere, which it is, and you chop it in half from the North Pole to the South Pole, then you have a cross-section of a sphere. And if you were to look at that cross-section here from the equator to, say, the North Pole, and measure the angles, it is a measurement of 90 degrees. And we use protractors to measure angles, by the way. So from the equator to the North Pole would be measured from 0 to 90 degrees north of the equator. And you can do the same thing in the Southern Hemisphere from 0 degrees down to the South Pole would also be 90 degrees. But here's the deal. Parallel or lines of latitude are measured as north or south latitude. So, for instance, where we are here in northwestern New Jersey, uh, we already mentioned how our longitude is about 75 degrees west of prime meridian. To pinpoint our location, we need the latitude as well. And our latitude is about 45 degrees north of the equator. So our latitude is about 45 degrees north. In other words, we're about halfway from the equator to the North Pole because the North Pole would be 90 degrees. That would be a right angle. So we're about halfway where we are here. We're about halfway to the North Pole. And believe it or not, we're also about halfway through our notes for the week. So you might say we're at a 45 degree mark for completing our notes on geomorphology. So I think this is probably a good place for us to end our journey for today, and we will finish our notes tomorrow. So for now, as always, I'll say bye-bye.